2019 was an amazing year for VR hardware, but there were some pretty great games to come out too. So here's my picks for the top 10 best Steam VR games of 2019. Number 10. Angry Birds flew into VR very early in 2019. You've certainly played Angry Birds on your phone before, so you know the drill. Take down the structures to eliminate the evil pigs by using an arsenal of Angry Birds at your disposal. Different birds have different properties, like exploding birds, or birds that split into even more birds. The game is full of charm and personality. It features great character animation, with fun little touches like when they turn around to give you a thumbs up before you launch them. The physics are also very well done like you would expect. And whenever you can cause a big structural avalanche, it's really satisfying. One twist in the VR version is that you need to teleport around the structure to plan the best attack, and sometimes you'll need to lean or stoop low for the right shot. Ever since the game's initial launch, they've added more levels, so there's 78 total now. But what's really cool is that they've recently added an NVR level creator, and I found creating levels to be especially fun. Angry Birds VR is a fantastic casual game, and the level creator adds so much more to the game as well. The price is $15. Number 9. Free Diver is a swimming exploration and survival game. You swim by holding the trigger buttons and simply swinging your arms. The direction that you swing is the direction that you propel from. It feels very natural and easy to do, and it does become a bit of an arm workout. You can also grab onto and propel yourself from solid surfaces, similar to Zero-G space games where you move along by pushing on walls. And just like the title says, you're free diving. That means you're swimming without an air tank. So a constant challenge is finding air supplies before you run out of oxygen. Along the way, you'll also need to solve small puzzle challenges like getting past dangerous areas or opening tricky doors. The voice acting is great. Both the writing and performing are realistic and not overdone or cheesy. And that's how you ended up with the doctor's keycard on your sleeve. And now I could access any secure area on the ship, including the lab. This game is very exciting to play. I felt visceral danger and peril trying to survive in this journey. I beat it in under an hour, and even though it's a short game, I thoroughly enjoyed every minute of it. I have a full let's play of this on my channel if you want to see more. I'll link to that down below. The price is $9. Number 8. Final Assault is a 1 vs 1 RTS game. There's no building of structures, each player is granted one command center that makes all of the units. And the first player to have their defense towers breached and command center destroyed loses the game. Can't stand losing, so I'm glad you made sure we did. That's good work, Commander. But even though there's no structures to be built, there's still lots of managing and strategy to be found in the combat itself. One of the first things I noticed about the game is that you actually do command individual units, which I found incredibly rare in VR strategy games. Your command center steadily deploys a bare minimum of troops that march toward the enemy base. But you obviously need more than that. So on one hand, you have a menu of units at your disposal, with the simple units on the bottom and the advanced units on the top. And to get access to the advanced units, you need to unlock those tiers with some cash. Grab a unit, and then decide where in the battlefield they should start out. You can then order the unit to move around or attack a specific enemy. And the combat mechanics feature the usual rock-paper-scissors dynamic. 
planes are best against infantry, rockets are best against tanks, etc. One of the most fun elements are the airplanes. It reminded me of the old Final Approach game where you can trace out exactly where they should fly. And if you trace a path on the ground, that's where the planes will strafe attack. There's multiple generals to choose from, each with unique units and abilities. There's both single-player campaigns and multiplayer. Out of all of the RTS games I've played in VR, this is my favorite one. It's incredibly well put together with a fun, light-hearted atmosphere and engaging strategy. The price is $30, and if you're an RTS fan, then it's totally worth it. <laughs> now the real fun begins. I'll see if I can't phase blast a few of them for you. Number 7, Borderlands 2 VR. I've never played the Borderlands franchise before. Playing this in VR was my first time, and I had a ton of fun playing this. It reminded me a lot of Fallout 4 VR, a post-apocalyptic wasteland with looting and gunplay being the focal point of all the action. It's an impressively large game with lots to see and do. And speaking of gunplay, I greatly enjoyed the fact that you're discovering new weapons and mods almost constantly. The action is continually fresh with the ever-evolving weapon loadouts, and it never gets stale. One unique feature to the VR version of the game is a slow motion mode that you can activate, which reminded me of the slow motion VAT system from Fallout 4. <laughs> It's both an enhancing and a necessary feature, since it's often difficult to move as fast in VR as you can playing a flat screen game. Speaking of movement, you can move via sliding or teleporting, and there are comfort options as well. The VR version includes, for free, most of the DLC from the original game as well. One downside is that there isn't multiplayer. For now, it's single player only. Playing Borderlands 2 in VR is fantastic fun, and delivers a unique dose of sensory overload action. It's one of the very few open-world AAA games available in VR right now. The price is $50. Number 6. Until You Fall is a hack-and-slash action game that gives a fantastic arm workout. Think of it like Beat Saber meets melee combat, and you have a good basic idea of the gameplay. But personally, I find this more exciting, and dare I say, more fun, than Beat Saber. Go, champion. Lay this one to rest. You progress on a linear path through a fantasy world where you have to destroy the evil creatures that have spread through the land. Sometimes you're free to attack at will, but most of the time you need to be on the watch for opening opportunities to strike, as well as be on the lookout for their attacks, which you'll need to block in a specific place. If you charge toward an enemy, you can knock them back for a bit to start the attack in your favor. Advantage. And when the orange combos open up, you want to keep swinging as directed for as long as you can to inflict the most damage. Every weapon in the game has a superpower that you can execute. The starting blades provide a temporary freezing ability and a shield. As you earn more experience, you'll gain access to more weapons and tons of different upgrade options as well. As the name of the game implies, you will eventually die. Ooh. Dang. It's just a matter of how far in the game you can get before dying. I find the visual design to be strikingly beautiful. The audio is also well done, and greatly adds to the excitement. Strike them down. The only mode of movement is sliding, but there is an optional comfort vignette to reduce motion sickness. Until You Fall is both exhausting and exhilarating. For a gorgeous and exciting arm workout, you can't go wrong here. The price is $20. <sighs> Good work.
Number five. Thief Simulator is a massive game that lets you live a life of crime. It's a VR port of the original and popular flat screen game of the same name. Initially, this VR port doesn't have all the content that came with the original, but having said that, this early access version has about 10 hours of play, and the rest of the content from the original will be added as the game continues in early access. So it'll get even bigger from here on out. While it's in early access, the game is $15, which is an incredible value for both the quantity and quality of gameplay. And for a VR port, the interactions are great. The way you drive, pick locks, use your crowbar, or even use the mouse on the computer are well implemented. If I didn't know any better, I would say this was made from the ground up for VR, based on the interactions and controls. There's lots of movement modes, featuring sliding, teleporting, and more. This isn't Grand Theft Auto. If you cause car accidents or even too much noise, you'll be penalized. And if you're being way too obvious, then you'll simply go to jail. Oh. They've stayed true to the name of the game. It really is a simulator and not an arcadey game. There's so much you'll be doing in here. Scoping out locations to learn the mark's schedules, buying tips on specific locations from online databases, and so much more. When I first played this, I had significant performance issues, but the developer has been updating and patching this game quite frequently, so I'm pleased to say that I've noticed many improvements since then. I'm really happy to see them continue to develop the game to make it better and better. For just $15, you get a lot of bank for your buck with this one. Number 4. Pistol Whip is John Wick meets Rhythm Shooter and Leg Workout. You drift forward inside 11 unique music scenes with bad guys running out to shoot you, but of course it's up to you to shoot them in time with the music. Actually, you can shoot them whenever you want, but if you shoot with the beat of the music, you get a higher score. If the bad guys get close to you, you can hit them with a Pistol Whip for a maximum score and to restore your health. The soundtrack is fantastic and adds to the epic movie action feel perfectly. I'm not playing the music in this video, but I'll link to my playthrough down below which includes the soundtrack. What surprised me most about this game is how much of a leg workout it really is. While playing and getting caught up in the action, you don't realize just how much leaning and squatting you're actually doing to dodge all the bullets and obstacles. The first time I played this, my legs were sore for days. This is the most fun leg workout I've ever had, so I try to play this at least every other day to keep my legs in relative shape. I know lots of people play this to get a high score, but I play it for the workout. The price is $25. Number 3. No Man's Sky Well, what can be said about No Man's Sky that hasn't been said before? It's a game about exploration and survival inside an infinite procedurally generated universe. And ever since this game received full VR support this year, it's now the biggest VR game by a wide margin. Playing this in VR is pretty amazing. Being able to hop into your ship and seamlessly leave a planet's atmosphere to explore space is so cool. And it's a space explorer's dream come true, since the game is literally endless. But the power of exploring an endless universe does come with a steep learning curve. This is without a doubt the deepest and most complicated game I've ever played. After 10 hours of playing, I was still learning new game mechanics along the way. So for a new player like myself, it's definitely slow going at the beginning of the game. But as with any deep game, the benefit is how much playtime and enjoyment you can find in here. If you like complex sci-fi survival exploration, then this could entertain you for a very long time. The regular price is $60. This is a professional workplace. The long-awaited sequel to Budget Cuts is here. If you're not familiar with the original game, I'll link to my review down below so you can get up to speed. Budget Cuts 2 begins just minutes after the ending of the first game, and while this game does stand on its own, I think you'll get more enjoyment by playing the original game first. Playing both games is a complete story journey. 
Budget Cuts 2 takes everything that was fun about the original stealth combat and makes it all even better. There's still the iconic portal teleportation, where you get a preview of possible danger before you teleport, and the combat includes the classic blade throwing to destroy bots. But to that they've added archery, which is perfect for taking out bots at long range. In close range, it's better to throw blades and scissors like before. There's also more variety in bots, and they're more deadly, whether it be armored bots with explosives, flying drones, or the original guards with guns. You'll find that the enemies are a worthy foe for your new weaponry. The level design is also more expansive. The first game had you indoors in a single building the whole time. This game takes you on train rides, exterior cityscapes, and more. Stealth really is the name of the game here. Your blades and projectiles are scarce in supply, and it's a one-hit kill for you, so if you rush things, you'll die fast. It's all very challenging. I think I died more in this game than any other game in recent memory. But even with the constant dying, I kept on playing because I was having so much fun. There is the occasional puzzle, but the vast majority of the game is stealth survival and progressing in the mission. I loved playing this. It's physically engaging, suspenseful, and exciting. There's three levels of difficulty, and on normal difficulty I beat the game in five hours. The price is $30. And finally, number one. Boneworks was one of the most anticipated VR games of the year, and for me, it did not disappoint. It features advanced realistic physics similar to Blade and Sorcery, but unlike Blade and Sorcery, which is simply a combat sandbox, this game provides so much more gameplay through a story campaign featuring both action and puzzle solving. In the story, you're actually playing inside a VR simulation, and you need to explore a dangerous city to find the central tower. Almost everything you see in the game can be interacted with or utilized as a weapon, which is incredibly rare in VR games these days. And to finally have a full story campaign within a game that features realistic interactions is amazing to play. I had so much fun playing this, and I feel like I witnessed the dawn of a new age in VR gaming. Boneworks raises the bar very high for VR games moving forward. I beat the campaign in about 11 hours, after which I unlocked Arena Mode, which plays very similar to Gorn. You can also unlock Sandbox Mode, which lets you freely play however you want. But the gotcha is that you need to hunt for the items and enemies you want inside the sandbox within the story campaign. I rarely feel the need to replay a game to find hidden items. But playing Boneworks was so much fun that I didn't hesitate to play again from the beginning to search and find items for sandbox mode. One downside though is that it's only sliding movement with no comfort settings. And I'm quite surprised that they didn't add any optional comfort settings. Hopefully they'll be adding those in the future. But in the meantime, if you don't get motion sick in VR, then you absolutely must play this. Confetti, we did it! <laughs> Celebration! Well, that's it for now. Thanks so much for watching. If you like what you see, please subscribe. See ya!